Addiction doesn't discriminate. As we are making this movie, we are going through this terrible opioid crisis. It's hit like category five. What makes this story stand out is that it's dealing with a topic that is very contentious, and it tells that story from every perspective. It's what's going on right now in America and in the world. To make a movie about something so prescient is sometimes rare. It really should be headlined every day. I was always very interested in these films that look at something from many viewpoints and tell multiple stories. I love the idea of the epic tale of these intersecting characters, intersecting narratives. But at the same time, it, it was about emotion. It was about the core of what do these drugs do to people and how do we as a society deal with them? And I had been thinking about these characters, Jake, Claire, Tyrone. I knew that I wanted to explore something in this area. What was really clever about the script was that he took three very different aspects of what uh, is going on in the opioid crisis. Who's making it? Who's profiting from it? Who actually benefits from the sale of opiates across this country? Our product will be the first truly non-addictive painkiller. Gary Oldman, as we all know, is a brilliant actor. Most recently won the Oscar for The Darkest Hour. I just want to double check our results here for you, make sure nothing is off. You know, we're really getting behind here. Everything will be fine. I play Tyrone Brower, who is a biochemist. He's a biology teacher who also does work on the side on these drugs. Is everything all right with it? This particular drug that we've been working on, it's a painkiller that is three times more addictive than oxycodone. What the hell is going on? And it's about to go public. He's seen what it's doing to people and wants to stop it. And I basically go up against the big pharmaceutical company. I become a whistleblower. This Fires. is the biggest public health crisis since tobacco. It's not our responsibility. Then whose is it? There's money. This pharmaceutical industry is one of the most powerful industries in the world. They make billions. There's a lot at stake to get this drug on the market. It's always the money. You follow the money trail. So they don't like me very much. I try to take care of it. It got so much bigger. He puts himself in peril, his family, his wife. It's got different levels of psychological thriller. There's a lot of action in it as well. You have who's chasing it, who is trying to actually make sure that the opiates are not arriving in the wrong hands. Of course, that's the police and the authorities. My guys run trucks through the entire United States. So you take the product to a warehouse, you package it as vitamins, then they come in their trucks and pick it up. Jake is an undercover DEA agent who's been working this case for a long time. You see the state that this guy's in and also his frustrations with the system that he's trying to push this through. What do you think we're here to do? To make a difference? He's fighting so hard against this crisis because he is directly affected by it. Okay. Your hands it's okay. Up. It's okay. Come on. Come on. He is trying to not only save the world from the opioid crisis, but also trying to save his sister. You know, you can tell that um, there's a lot more to it for him than just the work. This film for Army, he is very visible. He carries. It's something very different for the viewers to see. He takes the law into his own hands in a way that I think is compelling and thrilling cinema. He has a very dangerous job dealing with high-octane personalities and also Evangeline's character. Thank you, Miss Ramos. Please tell me what's going on. It's a very intense story. So if I was going to commit to it, I had to know I was ready and willing to commit everything. She's a high-level architect, you know, they can put themselves together nicely. And I wanted to make sure that women of all walks of life could imagine themselves in her shoes. Evangeline has injected herself into a situation that is beyond her depth. She is now going after really bad people. You had my son run drugs for you. I think as she peels back layer after layer of uh, the truth about her family and the truth about herself, she discovers something even more haunting. It's good to rehearse, and Nick likes to rehearse. I come from theatre, so, you know, I've always been used to that, and I miss it sometimes on film. What I like to do is sit with each of the actors individually and spend some days talking through the character, building the character. How do they want to approach it? 
It's great to feel like a collaborative nature. You can have like a really good engrossed conversation in character background. Nicholas Jarecki has given me more creative autonomy and freedom than I've ever had in my 15 year career. I went to a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. To actually have the chance to prepare in that way was an incredible luxury. I have an amazing 16 year old son. I would like to be a better person for him. I think the script is very well written, but as far as Nick is concerned, it's a blueprint. There's no pride of authorship. He's very stimulated by the actor's input. If you come in with a good idea, he's very quick to embrace it. I wanted a more immersive creative experience. I wanted my ideas to influence where the character went. That's what we wanted to show with these characters, that they had humanity and they had human flaws. We can all relate to a flawed character. You don't see it, do you? You don't see it. it this just doesn't go back in the bottle. Having all these different dynamic storylines, that's what makes this a truly great thriller. And then, of course, the cinematography, I think, is essential because it creates the tension. Who would have thought how here we are again shooting on celluloid, which is a rarity. We've got to have a plan for telling the truth. We tend to look at the disenfranchised, the people on the fringes of society with drug problems, and now it's crossing all walks of life. It's monumental. You cannot walk into that by alone. We can't quit. We can't stop. Last chance. You see, the stakes for every character are very high. And that's something I like to do from a storytelling perspective. We're always pushing tension, tension. We want you to be on the edge of your seat, and we want you to know not what happens next, we want you to wonder what happens next. A good thriller is something that the audience can't help but find themselves emotionally attached to. If it pulls you in and sucks up your attention, then you're there. They're gonna come after you. But what you're doing now may be the most important thing you ever do. I think a good film takes place somewhere between reality and the imagination. These elements together create something that is an enjoyable and thrilling cinematic ride. We can touch you anywhere in the world. We're running out of time. Hopefully the film reflects that and brings you somewhere new. No.